Welcome to the next episode of the Dark Web Deacon. Before we begin, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications. New videos are published every Monday and Thursday, and as always, be sure to like and provide comments. There are a lot of tech-heavy terms that can be used around computer security. Many of them can be a bit hard to explain in a simple manner, so they often get misused. One of the most frequently misused groups is the terms that differentiate malware from other types of threats. I thought I'd clear up the confusion by explaining what malware, trojans, viruses, and worms are, and how they are different from one another. They all can damage your computer to varying degrees, but the difference is if they are self-contained or part of another program, how they spread, and how people interact with them, if at all. So malware. This is the big catch-all phrase that covers all sorts of software with nasty intent. Not buggy software, not programs you don't like, but software which is specifically written with the intent to harm your computer. As such, viruses, worms, and trojans are all part of the class of software known as malware. Malware is short for malicious software, also known as malicious code or malcode. It is code or software that is specifically designed to damage, disrupt, steal, or in general inflict some other bad or illegitimate action on data, hosts, or networks. So let's talk about viruses. A computer virus is a type of malware that propagates by inserting a copy of itself into or becoming part of another program. It can either attach to good files on your computer or can be self-contained and search out other machines to infect. Viruses can range in severity from causing mildly annoying effects to damaging data or software or causing denial of service conditions. So just like a human virus, there's varying degrees of severity. Almost all viruses are attached to an executable file, which means that the virus may exist on a system but will not be active or able to spread until a user interacts with it, runs it, and or opens it. When the host code is executed, the viral code is executed as well. Normally, the host program keeps functioning after it has been infected by the virus, but in other times can be totally overwritten. Viruses spread when the software or document they are attached to is transferred from one computer to another using a network, a disk, file sharing, or infected email attachments. Now on to worms, which are very similar to viruses, which causes confusion in that they replicate functional copies of themselves and can cause the same type of damage. However, in contrast to viruses, which require the spreading of an infected host file, worms are standalone software and do not require a host program or human to help propagate them. They can self-replicate and create multiple copies and spread all by themselves. There are viruses that are self-contained and go around searching for other machines to infect. They act more like a biological parasite in these terms. To spread, worms either exploit a vulnerability on the targeting computer or use some kind of social engineering to trick users into executing them. More advanced worms can leverage encryption, wipers, and ransomware technologies to harm their targets. And finally, Trojans. Well, you have to harken back to high school if you remember the story of the wooden horse that turned out to be a full of guys with spears that attacked the city of Troy. This is basically the computer equivalent. You run a file that is supposed to be something fun or important and something you're familiar with, but it turns out that it's neither fun nor important. It's now doing nasty things to your machine. It is a harmful piece of software that looks legitimate. Users are typically tricked into loading or executing it on their systems. After it is activated, it can achieve any number of attacks on the host computer, from irritating the user with pop-up windows or changing their desktop, to changing the host by deleting files, stealing data, or activating and spreading other types of malware, potentially such as viruses. Trojans are also known to create backdoors to give malicious users access to the system. Unlike viruses and worms, 
Trojans do not reproduce by infecting other files, nor do they self-replicate. Trojans must spread through user interaction, such as opening an email attachment or downloading and running a file from the internet. An even more colorful metaphor for describing the difference between worms, viruses, and Trojan horses very simply is by looking at the Black Plague. The mice which carried the fleas and the bacteria are like the Trojan horse. People were familiar with them, people didn't view them as a threat, and they were really widespread throughout the city. The tick in this case is the worm. Um, the tick that carried the bacteria for the bubonic plague is like the worm. It can spread on its own, it can self-replicate, and then spread this bacteria. And then, of course, the bacteria, bacteria Yersinia pestis, is the virus that ultimately caused the most death and destruction and actually changed the, obviously, the underlying files, in this case, cells of people, and had them degrade and cause people to become sick, ill, and die. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, subscribe, and provide comments, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell in order to check out future videos published twice a week.